the very first watch that I ever bought, it wasn't this one. I think it was in 1987. I just, I had, or eight, yeah, 87. I just graduated high school and I got a job working for a factory. And one of the first things that I bought was a, was the first watch I ever bought was a Casio G-Shock, the original one. And this is uh, not mine. This is the one I just bought for Jack. Uh, but this is essentially the classic G-Shock. Now, when you look at those G-Shocks, I know a lot of guys really like them. And, and before I bought the one I'm wearing now, I, I did look at them and I looked at the Mudmasters and, and all those. And, and they're cool. Uh, no, no doubt about it, but they're, just, they're a bit much. They're, they're a little bit much. I guess I kind of like to fall on the more traditional, the classic side of it. Um, it's kind of like wearing a transformer on your arm and I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I just, it's just not for me. I, I don't have anything bad to say about them, but if I was going to buy a G-Shock and I am going to buy one, uh, for work, just day to day stuff, I'm going to get this one right here. This is a kind of a remake of the classic one. I am so heartbroken. I, I had the original one was built so much heavier than this. You see, this has got like a, it's got an aluminum case on the back there. So with the screws on there, it's still, what is it? Is it a 200 meter watch? I think it is somewhere around there. My old eyes, I can't see. Yeah, 200 meter watch. Uh, but the other one, it was built so much more solid. It had the heavy duty uh, stainless steel screw on deal. And I, um, I broke it. I broke the crystal and it cracked and it got water in it. And that was it. I, and I had it up till maybe two years ago. And finally, it just had to go away. So Jackie likes to wear a watch. So, so what I kind of what I got for him or steered him towards was this one. Uh, just if you're just going to have one $60, uh, watch you can buy on Amazon. It just, I guess, I guess it just ticks all those boxes. It's a great, and I think it looks good. I think it's a little bit understated and it's not so, so over the top, like so many of those G shocks are. So if you, a guy was only going to have one and you needed it for everything for a work watch, uh, that was tough. That'd be pretty hard to beat. I don't know that you could do better for 60 bucks, but that's the only digital watch I'm going to show you. I'm going to go uh, back more to the traditional one. So the very first one that I bought for myself, I don't have. It was, um, I had, I think I just turned 21 and I splurged. It was expensive. It was a like a $1,500 Swiss made Tag Heuer with a bracelet. It was a, a watch that I saved for and I wanted and I, I just loved that watch. I had it for many, many years and I wore it on a wildland fire and the bracelet broke someplace and I lost it. And it was just went went gone. I don't have any idea where it was. I could tell you probably what county it was in. So then I, I kind of got into the more of the classic dress washes. And this was the second one that I bought here. This was uh, an Omega or as our British friends say, Om is it Omega? Omega, Omega. Uh, automatic. This is a vintage watch. I'm guessing was probably built in the '60s, and this is one that I bought. I bought on eBay, and and I I think I think I was kind of inspired by a, a James Bond movie because James Bond, you know, he wears the the always wears the Omegas as well as the Seikos and the Rolexes. All three of those, he's the James Bond character has worn in movies. Uh, but I was looking at the I think the video I saw he was wearing a Seamaster, and then I went to, and checked, and they were so expensive they were way outside my price range, of course. So I went to eBay and I bought this vintage one, uh, Omega Automatic Seamaster. Look at that, isn't that cool? It's got the Sea Monster, classic Sea Monster, waterproof there in the back. This is an automatic watch, meaning that uh, the as you move. It's got a weight, a weight in there. As you move your wrist, it uh, it winds it, as well as a winding feature on the crown. So you could do it both ways. So what I found with, with this watch was, uh, you know, the, the, the thing with these vintage watches, I mean, they may have originally been waterproof, but I think most people will tell you is that if you do get a vintage watch, um, don't take it anywhere near water. Uh, the seals dry up. I mean, there may be exceptions, but they're they're pretty delicate. They're not at all up to some of the standard of the dive watches we have today. And, you know, this may have been, this is probably from the early 60s. If I had to guess, this may have been the, the dive watch back in the day, but it certainly isn't anymore. But it is, a, it is a pretty dress watch. And I just wore it for a daily watch for a long time. You can see that the crystal's all scratched up there and I think even the lug there looks like it's bent. And so uh, since I've had it for so long, I thought, you know what I'll do is I, as I ordered a, I ordered a kind of a nice leather strap for it uh, yesterday, 
I'll put that on and I'll just, I'll, I'll wear this, wear this for, for nice things, you know, maybe uh, going out to dinner with Mrs. W when I want a smaller, more of a dress watch and not such a huge watch as I typically wear like a diver. But I thought, I think that was kind of cool. I like the red face and, and, uh, it's neat. It's fun, fun to have an Omega. It was, I don't think I paid that much for it. It was maybe $150, $200. I don't know what it's worth now. I have no idea, but that's it. So that was my, after my tag, this was the, this was the, uh, Next one. So then, uh, what I then I had a whole bunch of, of crummy digital watches. This one here is not mine, but I thought I'd share it with you. So I bought this for my granddad about uh, 20 years ago for a Christmas gift. This is the classic. I think this was one of the first Swiss Army knives, or the one first one that I remember seeing. Kind of the it's the classic design. It's their it's their their entry level one, kind of bottom bottom of the line there. And it's a 50 meter watch according to them. And I have no reason to believe it isn't. This is a quartz watch, so it runs off a of battery. And Granddad wore this for well, a long time. I don't know, man. The time goes by. I would imagine twenty years or so. And it came back to me when he passed on a few years ago. And this is um, this is kind of cool. I'm glad to have it back since I purchased it for him, and it's a memory uh, of him. So he had a watch band on it that was um, one of those elastic type, which I really I don't know how he wore that thing. The metal with this stretchy metal one and it was all falling apart so i took it off and and i just I'll, i ordered a watch band for this as well so um i i put i'll put a battery in it and a new watch band and i'll wear this from time to time just as kind of a fun thing you know it's fun to swap it swap it out and every time i look at it kind of reminds me uh, reminds me of him but that's uh that's that watch it's not it is mine but i didn't purchase it for me and then uh, uh and then so then i decided i i liked dive watches and i i'm like okay so i started looking into dive watches and uh, i bought this one used let's see if i can hold it up here a few years ago and i've always really loved this watch this is a marathon um automatic dive watch this is one of the first ones the original ones they don't look like this anymore uh, the case and the bezel and the crown and everything are very similar uh, but this one has a cyclops date which i i really cherish i think it's cool it's really sad that they didn't they don't do those anymore. Also, the illumination in it is um, is is not the tritium, I think, like the new ones do. And the new ones come in three different sizes. They have a small one, a medium, which would be kind of this size, and they have a huge one. And these watches are really interesting because they were they're kind of marketed as rough service or tool watches. No frills watches, um, not a lot of fit and finish to them, just a super tough, durable watch. And apparently, I don't know if it's marketing or if this is really the case, but they claim that they sell these to a lot of um, military guys, uh, U.S. government contracts, contract workers. That's kind of their shtick and, and what they say. And I, I don't, don't know if that's true. But if you read a lot of forums or watch guys that really know, everyone ha has a real high opinion of these. They have a... A sapphire crystal they have a, a really proven automatic uh, swiss movement inside of course you know that just you can look at the size of the case and the crown and the heft of it it is one chunky burly rough service watch and i'll attest to that i bought this used i would say what was it i would say probably 12 years ago or so i'm just guessing on ebay i think i paid about 600 dollars for it and it came with uh, it came with the original bracelet, which is here. Which I, you can see how beat up and and torn up it is because I wore it for years and years and years daily, working on cars, never took it off. Um, wildland firefighting, firefighting, lots of abuse, and it has been a great watch. Never had any problems with it. Was it unidirectional bezel? Interesting thing about these bezels is I I recently learned I always thought that. Of course, this is a diving feature, right? And so people, I always was told, so, all right, so you're going to say you have 30 minutes of air uh, in your tank and you set this here to zero and then you're watching it and as it goes up, then you know when to come back up, right? Well, uh, and the reason why they're unidirectional only will go one way is that you, if you bumped it, you could never add more time and get confused. You could only take away, which is only going to bring you up sooner before you get into, into mischief, right? Well... Well, you know, being a firefighter, we ha we use uh, compressed air, SCBAs, and there is no such thing as 30 minutes of air. It depends on the person. It depends on your fitness level. It depends on how anxious you are. And 
and how much air you breathe. Uh, there is no such thing. So this is nothing more than uh, basically telling you uh, how long you've been down. Uh, you form a diving plan when you go down. Okay, we're going to go down for 30 minutes. We'll go down for 30 minutes, and and then at uh, uh, what we want to at 20 minutes we want to start coming up. You know, maybe you're going through decompression or whatever. So that's more of the of what it's for. It's not has nothing to do with keeping track of how much air is in the tank. Uh, but that's that's a common feature. But I really enjoyed this watch uh, up until the point where it quit uh, keeping good time. And so it was losing time, and, and an automatic watch as you, if you can hear that, you can hear, you can feel the counterbalance goes round and round as you move your wrist, and it winds the watch. And I can feel that it's, it's not smooth as it was, it's sticking. Something inside it, maybe it needs cleaned, or it's sticky, um, but it's, it's hanging up and it's not keeping very good time since you were working at all now. So then I called, I called Marathon um, about um, you know, getting it looked at, getting it repaired. And another thing with automatic watches is you know, most people are going to tell you if you buy one, you're going to have to have it serviced every five years. And that's uh, depending on what it is. That can be very expensive. My, my dad has a Rolex Submariner. He had his watch serviced, and I think it was over $500. So take that into consideration. You know, when you buy a, a high-end automatic watch, you, you're not done buying. <laughs> you, you get to rebuy every five years or so. The other thing that I've found with automatic watches is, for me, it's always telling the wrong time. Uh, my Mrs. W is, co is constantly giving me a hard time. She'll ask me what time it is, and I'll tell her the time, and it's always wrong because I have taken the watch off when I went to bed or something, or it didn't get wound, and I put it back on, and it's not keeping the right, right time. And it pretty much was just useless. I was wearing it more of a decoration than anything else. Um, and then you have the date, you know, and I was always off on the date. And, you know, that's where this is so nice. You know, a quartz watch or a watch with a, a, a battery in it is going to just be it's just right all the time for years and years and years. So these, they're cool and all. The automatic watches, there's no quick, quick question. There's a lot of elitism and snobbery around them that has to be like that. You know, it's like rifle scopes. If it's not a first focal plane, you know, it's not a real scope, you know, it's all that nonsense. Um, but I, I understand I, the, the coolness factor of it. Um, it is it is pretty incredible. It is definitely special. So uh, so this watch, it was just cost prohibitive. I mean, I it was, you know, for... Almost, more than half of what I paid for it was going to go into getting it cleaned and rebuilt. I'm like, ah, oh, man, I just don't, you know. I, I, I found it difficult to wear because it was so big and so heavy. I was taking it off all the time. And I thought, okay, that's just not a good fit for me. I love it. Um, it looks really cool. It's, it's a fun watch to have, but not super practical for me. So then I went on the hunt for, okay, what do I want? I want... I want a classic look. I want the classic analog style watch, um, but something a little bit not so gigantic, right? And that's when I came to this. Um, and I've shared this with you guys before too. So then I decided on the Hamilton. Um, I didn't know a lot uh, I, about watches when I bought this. I know more, quite a bit more about it now. It's kind of, I, I'm not a collector, but I, I like to watch some of these watch videos and read blogs and different things. But but this was a pretty good choice. Uh, I kind of stumbled upon. I, I was looking at the military watches. I thought, let's just go with kind of a classic American U.S. military style field watch because they're, they just have that great look to them. They're really thin. They're easy to wear. Um, they're kind of cool. They have that, that nostalgic kind of World War II thing going on. And you know, we operate on 24-hour time on the on the fire ground, and so that makes it kind of convenient to have that uh, and the date. And it's just a classic watch. It just looks very similar to um, something that would have been issued in World War II. There's lots of companies that make these field watches. You know, the prominent ones. If I had, if I knew what I knew now, knew then what I knew now, I wouldn't have bought this watch. I would have bought the Seiko, uh, the Seiko Quartz, uh, that um, is their version of the field watches. I think is a better choice, and it's what one third the price. So, but this is still cool. Hamilton has that that cachet or kind of that um, 
oh, that credibility from from being a supplier of watches to the U.S. government and military for World War II. And it's you get a lot of stuff with this watch, really. You get a sapphire crystal. And a sapphire crystal is, is, is the best, uh, most scratch-resistant uh, crystal that you can have on a watch. It's also, you're going to get that with the Marathon as well. Very scratch-resistant. Not When I look at this, I can... I can you know, reflected off the light, I can see that there is not a mark on it. And this one either. It's pretty amazing Beings I've used it to work on cars and drag it through engine blocks and, and all of those sorts of things. You get, a auto, you get a Swiss movement. This watch will come two ways. It'll come in an automatic that's self-winding. Um, and then I just opted for the, the less expensive one, which is just the manual wind. I thought, oh, that's kind of cool. You know, it's kind of like the way granddad used to do it, right? You get up in the morning and wind your watch. Well, I got over that pretty quick. I didn't like that at all because I kept forgetting to do it. And again, now I had the same problem, always wearing a watch that's, that's not telling the right time because I forgot to to wind it. And that became a problem a couple times on some fires that I was on when I needed to coordinate different resources and I didn't have the time. I didn't have a phone on me because I forgot to wind my watch. Second thing I had an issue with this is that this is supposed to be, it's not a scuba diving watch, it's not a, not rated for that, but it, you should be able to take it for a swim, right? Well, uh, uh, when, if you go in the pool with this, it, it, fills, fills, it gets water inside of it, condensation, condensation, and now the arms are resting, and I didn't take it more than six or seven feet deep, and I would expect for a, a field watch that you should be able to take it swimming, right? Or in a hot tub without it getting ruined. So that was kind of a bummer and a drag, and I lost faith in it, and I felt like I couldn't even wear it in the shower because it was going to get water in it. And I had to wind it all the time, and and it just looked a little bit small too. It wasn't it was a very comfortable watch, but I I I don't know. I just never really, after having it for a while and living it with with it for a while, I really liked it when I first got it, and I just I didn't like it so much. It was the the main thing was the water. It was was not being able to um, to take it swimming. That's that's a bad deal right there. So so I have that one, um, and that has not been not not been my favorite. Okay, so I went on the hunt, and I found the perfect watch. You want to see what the perfect? <laughs> How about the perfect watch for me? So I went on the hunt, and I so I, I I said what I want is I want something like the Marathon because I enjoyed that so much, and with the durability of this, but I want uh, a quartz movement, and I want it. To, Something that gives me the fizz, something that really uh, it looks looks cool and, and that I enjoy having, and so I I mean of course I was always aware of Seiko watches, I knew that they were just a good quality company, but I didn't realize what a cool company they were, um, and some of the amazing things that they produce. Uh, they have a premium line called the Grand Seikos, which are rival Rolexes for quality and price. Um, I think they start in the four thousand dollar range and they go up from that, and they are exquisite pieces of art. I mean, not something that I would ever own, but they are just magnificent. Um, and then they have uh, their what maybe their work watches or their full-on professional watches like this one that are specifically de designed for a task. And, and that's this one here is the Seiko Tuna designed for uh, saturation diving. This watch is fascinating uh, that there's just nothing like it every everything's so much so many watches are, are kind of a copy of the rolex submariner and that whole kind of genre of watches this is something that's rarely it's really unique to me and i i i first time i saw one i didn't know what it was i was just kind of perusing around looking for watches and i immediately was interested in i found it compelling uh, there's a number of things that i liked i liked that it had this armored stainless steel shroud protective shroud bolted onto the case of the watch what i what really drew me to it was the um the convex uh crystal that is a, a domed what they call it a double domed crystal uh that gives the watch so much um such an interesting look to it it's not flat like this and so you get uh the light kind of reflects off of it and, and it, when you're looking inside of it it just it just gives me the warm and fuzzies. I just think it's just the coolest thing. I had not seen that on a lot of watches. And so I, I saw it and I started reading about it and um, how it came about. This watch, it took took seven years for Seiko to develop this watch for specifically for saturation divers. And how it started was uh, when the scuba 
you know, scuba industry started ramping up and that be, guys were able to go deeper and deeper that when they were saturation diving, what they were finding was a, a gas, I think it was helium was getting inside of the dive watches. Seiko and Rolex and a couple of the company were producing specific dive watches was getting inside of these. And when they were coming up or decompressing, it was blowing the crystals out. The watches were exploding. And so one of these saturation divers wrote Seiko and told them about this problem of this dive watch. And they went to work um, designing this watch, the, the Tuna, or this, there's several variations of it, but the grandfather Tuna, the original one, uh, seven years designing this watch to be able to handle that environment. Now, the earliest ones, I think, were 600 meter rated. Uh, then they went on to produce some that are, and they still do today, that are 1,000 meter rated. Interesting thing about the 1,000 meter rated dive watches those watches are a little bit bigger than this with the same, very similar design other than they all load through the front like a Rolex does, where this is a 300 meter watch, more of a budget option uh, that has a, a spin-off case, case back on there, right there. Um, and so what they, what they did was that they had rated those watches for a thousand meter dive depth and they put them on a, a submarine or something and they took them down to 3000 uh, meters and the watches were still functioning properly. I guess there was one issue that the pressure was so intense at that depth that it actually pushed the crystal, the pressure of it down and it came in contact with one of the arms. So that was the fail point. So they tested it, you know, over twice its its rated uh, depth and it still came up and still functioned properly. I mean, they're really they're really really interesting. They have a a, a tremendous history and they have um they're a tool watch. They're specifically designed to do a, sp a particular job. And that's what kind of makes it cool. If you look at the, the way that the, the bezel is laid out, it's, it's protected with this shroud here so that if you were to bump it, see the screws, isn't that cool? They bolt on there. If you were to bump it, it's less likely uh, to rotate it or to move it or to change your settings. So it's only exposed on the bezel from here to here and here to here. So at, at the natural you have a natural, that's what your grip would be to turn it and to rotate the bezel. And the bezel turns 120. It's 120 clicks in it. So two for every second. That's, I thought that was kind of cool. It's got the, the Seiko, nobody does the illumination better than the Seiko does. It, uh, I, I can wake up anytime at night and then they have, uh, you can see it. You can read it all the time with no lights. It's amazing. If you look at the arms, uh, uh, the, or the dial, the, what do you call these? arms I don't know pointers uh, see how they're different one is is an arrow and one is more shaped like a sword let me bring it up here closer here so you can see that uh, that's to to make sure that there's no confusion if you're in low light or in the dark that you there's no no question on which one is the minute hand which one's the second and even on the second hand you see the little dot right there where there's a little there's a loom on that as well as a loom at the 12 o'clock position that's that's protected underneath right here underneath the crystal so that so there's no chance of that getting damaged or knocked off it's just a beautiful beautiful watch uh, they have a screw down crown here big crown and what's really nice is the crown is at the uh, at the what do you call it to see the four o'clock position so it makes it a lot more comfortable one one issue I have here with my watches is when I have a crown that is right here at the three o'clock Whenever I bend my hand up on these large watches like this one, especially, I found it exceedingly uncomfortable. And I actually start getting scar tissue right there where that watch comes in contact. And I, I never like that. So Seiko has moved that down to the uh, four o'clock position and, and taken that, that problem out of the equation. I just, I just absolutely adore this watch. These things have such a following. I mean, there are so, it just, a lot of people think they're ugly and don't like them. But there is a, a very devout following of these watches, people that collect them, and, and they're just really interesting. And they're just so, such a well-made, beautiful, beautiful watch. When you compare these two, this one is pales in comparison to finish, to quality, to just overall. Yeah, I, I know people say, well, it's not intended to be a, a dress watch. Uh, no, I understand that, but you're getting you know pretty close to the same price range on these two, and there's just no comparison, in my opinion, which one I would rather have, and it's quartz, and it's probably, arguably, the best quartz movement um, that money can buy. Um, it is 
this quartz movement in the tunas, the Seiko tunas, was specifically made for this watch. It's not put in any other watch. It's an in-house movement. Seiko even grows their own crystals. If you want to watch some cool videos, uh, watch the Seiko, Grand Seiko videos of other, some of those, their master artists, I guess you'd call them, or watchmakers, assembling these things and putting them together. It's, it's unbelievable. Unbelievable the, left of de the depth of detail. And you want to talk about detail. If there's a people that can go into detail and do it right, it's uh, the Japanese. Man, oh man. They are just exquisite craftsmen. As you might guess, I'm in love with this watch. So I've only had it, uh, this was a special gift to me from um, Miss, Mrs. W for Christmas. Um, she surprised me with it, and uh, I, just, I just love it. I, I was wondering at first when I got it if, uh, I really like this. All I do is sit, sit around and play with it and look at it uh, if, if the new is going to wear off on it, but I don't think so. I, I could definitely get the bug. Um, I find myself wanting to have another one of a different color. <laughs> so, but I'm not, I'm not going to be a, a watch collector. This is fine. You should be happy with what I have. Uh, Price-wise, um, these are, they're simple. I think, you know, and these watches, they mainly hold their value really good. I, I bought this, uh, I could sell it today on eBay with it once I have it repaired. Uh, for probably two hundred dollars more than I paid for it uh, 10 12 years ago and uh, I was uh, looking at these used and even these Seiko these tunas that are used uh, that are just have the tar beat out of them all scratched up and beat up and definitely been used sorry the camera shut off there I think, I think what I was saying was it, it didn't make much sense to, to buy a, a used one that was 20 years old and all beat up and scratched um, and to hell them back for for two hundred dollars less than you could buy a, a brand new one for, so that's that's kind of what my thinking was. But the, on the nice side, or the flip side is, is that if you do buy a used one uh, off of eBay or something, and you you take care of it, you could enjoy it. You're most likely going to sell it for what you paid for it or more um, on these because they're so collectible and there's so many guys that are just so interest. They're, they're so so interesting, so interesting. Let's talk about bands a little bit. Uh, so I uh, decided to go with. Um, of course, the band that came with this and what, what come with a lot of dive watches are these rubber. And even though this is a, really a high quality one, it's a Seiko, uh, I don't know if it's silicone or, or whatever it is. I, I, can't, I can't stand wearing these things. I, I, ha I hate the way that they feel. They pull the hair on your arm. Um, they, I, I like a watch that kind of moves around a little bit. You know, it, it, once it slips off my wrist, I, I just don't like them. I can't stand them. They bother me to no end. One interesting thing though about them is see the little curly Q deals? You see that on some watches? That was, I think that was designed by Seiko. Because when uh, divers, if they go down really deep, the pressure actually makes their the diamond or their wrist smaller. And this was uh, just designed to kind of compensate and keep keep the watch band tight. That's what I read anyway. So I got rid of that. Uh, don't like that at all. What I wanted was a really nice bracelet. Now you can order tunas and Seikos and different things with a factory bracelet, meaning a metal, kind of a metal bracelet. But I don't like their bracelets. They're not super high quality, and they look—they don't look very good. They—they've kind of—they've kind of gotten away from the classic, like the super engineers and the end mills and and such that we—they are so pleasing to the eye, um, and added their own twist on them, which they haven't done very well, in my opinion. So I'm just not a fan of them. So I. Uh, I would recommend you get just get one that's got the cheapest band on it that that you can get, and you can save a hundred dollars. Take that hundred dollars and go to uh, a company called Strap Code. I think they're in the UK, and they produce super high quality, beautiful watch specific bracelets. And that's what this is. This is a Strap Code, uh, so what they call a super engineer. That's this design. Whether it doesn't matter who makes it, the engineer design. It has the smallest interlocking links. And these are surprisingly comfortable because they're so supple, um, because they have so many pieces that move and they move with the arm and they move with the wrist and they're really gorgeous because they're faceted and you can see it reflecting off the light. It just almost kind of kind of glitters like a, uh, it's really flashy. It's super, Miss W thinks it's too fancy, um, but it kind of has that facets like a, like a diamond does, but I think it's really pretty and really comfortable. The nice thing about strap code is you can go there and whatever your watch is for the more popular ones, they make the band specifically for the tuna, for example. They make everything to fit perfectly so it looks like it's a factory band and it's not um, not like many of the aftermarket ones that just don't, never do really look like they fit all that well. You can get lots of different types. Uh, you can go with like, the this is the super engineer 
2. They have the Engineer 1 that doesn't have the chamfers on the edge. You can go with this style here. This is a classic, what they call a, um, a an oyster style with the big link in the center and then the skinnier ones on the side. They have a version of this uh, as well. They have the end mills. They have the Jubilee, like you would see like on a Rolex Datejust from the 90s, you know, with the little links on the center. All Whatever you like, you can really spice up and kind of an old watch or watch that you've kind of you know, not really lost interest in by getting a really pretty bracelet for it um, and kind of get a new life on it. it. It's really neat. And not only that, but you can get, uh, you can choose whatever uh, clasp style you like. I chose this one here. It's just got a, a safety clasp on it and then it's got two spring bars right here that you press and then it opens up. It's a very well-made clasp. When I look at this, this watch band from uh, Strap Code, Compared to the one that came with the Marathon, this is the factory one that came with that Marathon watch. This thing is crummy. I mean, it's chintzy. Look at the, you can see it's super thin. Uh, I could just take it and just, I could just bend it and just break it. Um, hollow, uh, tiny pins, just, it's, it's not nice. I used to think it was nice until I got a hold of one of these and the, that is, this thing is robust. Look at the thickness of it, the heft of it. Look at the beautiful little, there's a little pin right there. So if you, uh, if you can see here, see that, if you can see that hole right there, ah, anyway. So you fold it like this and it, and it latches on there. Now that's locked. That won't come off until you push those spring pins. And then this is, then there's a safety clasp on there. Kind of like a, a sub, Submariner there, very similar. But you can choose that as well. I thought that was cool. I didn't even know the company existed until I got this and I started looking for a nice looking bracelet. Um, and I think I think that they just make beautiful stuff. They're all drilled for the link, so you can change. You don't have to take it to a jeweler to resize it. You've got they're almost infinitely adjustable. You've got three options right there for the spring pin, and you can take these out with a tiny screwdriver and, and add or subtract links. And you can do it from both sides, so that when you when you do size it, that it's sized correctly and that the clasp lines up uh, the way you want it. So those are. Gorgeous, but those are for fancy those those bracelets like that. You don't want to take a I don't know that you want to take a, a Nice watch like this out wildland firefighting or dirt bike riding or whatever you're gonna do hunting um, Because if this this spring pin were to fail right there That's how you lose your watch and then the, the watch separates and if you're not don't notice it It falls on the ground then you've lost it you only, you know, the whole thing doesn't matter how well it's the weakest link is that spring pin right there and that's I think that's how I lost my my tag on that fire so the solution is this so the NATO bands and these NATO bands are really have uh, are really popular uh, because they're they give you an added level of security as well as they're inexpensive and they just look cool and they're comfortable and I, I just think the world of them. I've got three of them, and I really like them. Now, the NATO bands, they come in, in as far as I know, a couple different designs here. Um, and there is, there is a two, there's the two loop, and then there's the four loop. And if you look and see there on the side, uh, that's the difference. The four loop actually has an extra layer that the watch goes through like that. Why? I have no idea. I never have understood why they did that. And I... One nice thing about it, though, is that when the you, the band comes in contact with your skin instead of the back of the bracelet, if that matters to you. So it's it's a little bit more a little bit warmer if if the watch if it's really cold out. But if you wear your watch all the time, usually it's warm anyway. It's either one. So I don't know. Uh, I I think this one's more comfortable. Uh, but the nice thing about the NATOs is this. I'll demonstrate here. So I've got just one spring pin on this Hamilton. But let's say you uh, when you put them on. Right, so you weave them through the through the spring pins, and then if this were to have uh, the other spring pin, you would weave it through there, right? I can demonstrate here. So now you see that if you were to lose one of the spring pins, uh, the watch you wouldn't lose the watch because it's being held individually, separately by each spring pin. So you can see, let's say that this one broke and fell off when I wasn't paying attention, and this has happened to me on this particular watch. I was on a fire and the watch was flopping like this, like, oh man, I didn't even notice it. Had that been a normal band, I would have lost it, but because it was on a NATO band, um, it, it gave its a little insurance policy. So you can see once you thread them on there through, through the spring pins, and then this goes here like that, and, and they, they're pretty cool. 
um, I do like them and they're very, very comfortable. A uh, very nice, nice band. So that's a good way to go. So I'll, when, when I go out on, on fires, I'll be taking this watch for sure. Um, but I will be putting it on a, on a NATO band. Just one of these here with green one doesn't really make any difference just for that added level of security. Uh, just they're, they're really nice. Really, really nice. I, I like them. So that's kind of my favorite bands. These, I think these come in, this is kind of a, I don't know what it's called, nylon or Cordura, but they make them in canvas and they make them in leather. There's lots of companies. I don't know who makes the best ones, but be careful. There's some really cheap crummy ones out there, but you know, check around. And I think Zulu, these were probably the Zulu brand, but uh, the strap code, they make really nice ones too. So this was kind of fun since so you can kind of change change your watch and kind of the way it feels and looks with the band and, and also how it's being used. You, know, you take the marathon, and they have a very different look. You take the marathon and put it on a NATO band, it looks completely different than, say, when you put it on its on its bracelet. You know, it's just that whole whole different deal there. But uh, that's it. That's my uh, that's kind of my a history of my of my watches. And can you tell I like this one? Man, this is really this watch gives me the fizz. I love it. I love that crystal. Love the history of it. I have to be careful. I could easily turn into a collector of these. I only need one. I keep telling myself I only need one. All right. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you on the next one.